welcome back to the semi-final of the Great British Bake Off. I can't believe how quickly this series has gone and it's been really great to recreate some of the challenges from this series. Let's see what we're going to do this week. Prue would love you to make a sable breton tart. Your tart should consist of a sable breton pastry topped with raspberry confiture and piped pistachio creme mousseline. Okay, so it's patisserie week and we'll be doing a sable breton for technical challenge this week. I've never made one of these, but I have tried them before on previous visits to France, so I can't wait to recreate a dairy-free version. Let's dive in and take a look at the process. So let's go ahead and make our sable dough first. So that's going to be the base for our tart. You can see here that I'm already setting my butter to mix in my stand mixer. That needs to beat for about two to three minutes until it is soft and creamy. Then in the bowl at the back, I have my dry ingredients where I sifted my flour, baking powder and salt. And the bowl on the right, I'm whisking together my egg yolk and sugar. Now it says caster sugar on the recipe. If you don't have caster sugar, just use regular sugar. You might need to just whisk it a little bit longer to make sure those granules are incorporated. Once the egg yolk caster sugar mix is done, we're going to go and add our butter to it. And this is going to start to form our dough. Mix it together with a wooden spoon. That's making sure everything is nice and combined. Do that until it's light and fluffy, and then we're gonna add our dry ingredients. And I'm just lightly folding these in here. It doesn't take long to come together, that's why I'm doing this by hand, instead of using my stand mixer or a hand whisk. And then we're gonna add it to some plastic wrap, chill it in the fridge for an hour, and whilst it's doing that, let's get some tips from Prue for this week's technical. So they've got to make a sable breton bottom, which is a very thick biscuit. And then there's a thin layer of raspberry confiture, French for jam, and then a mousseline. So now we're gonna start on our creme mousseline, which is a little bit of a process. And I've never made one of these before, so this is definitely a really interesting part of the technical bake for me to try this week. I've started off with putting my plant-based milk into a saucepan, and I've added a bit of vanilla bean paste to it. Now you're just gonna bring that to the boil. Whilst it's doing that, we're gonna to whisk together our egg yolk and our sugar, and that's just gonna lighten up the mix as well. Then we're gonna add some flour to it and continue to whisk that until it is smooth. Now you can see that I've sped this up a little bit. My milk has come to the boil and I'm gonna pour that into my egg mixture and whisk it continuously. We wanna make sure that we don't get any scrambled egg or anything here. Once it's combined, quickly pour it back into the pan and you're gonna heat it through again until it comes to the boil, which will happen very quickly because it's very hot at this stage already. Then we're gonna reduce the heat and simmer it for three to five minutes. Occasionally, you're just gonna give it a little bit of a stir to stop a skin forming on it. And then just keep going until it forms a really nice consistency, it is smooth, and it no longer tastes floury. What we're essentially doing is cooking off that flour here as well, and that's gonna help with the consistency of the mousseline. Okay, so that's done. We're now ready to pour that into another bowl. And what we need to do is to actually bring this down to a cooler temperature. So we're gonna cover it with cling film. And that again is just to prevent the skin forming on it. Then it's gonna cool on the counter and then finally end up in the fridge where it will chill for an hour until it is set. So where could they go wrong with this? They might not understand that this thing doesn't have sides. They just cut the pastry out plonk it in the tin to get that nice edge. Right, that could catch them out. So that's a great tip from Paul Hollywood because generally when you're making tarts, you do always tend to make a side to your base. So that's something that I wouldn't have thought of if I was doing this for the first time and hadn't watched the show already. So let's go ahead, our sable dough has chilled. Now we can go ahead and roll it out and put it in the pan. You'll see that I've already greased my pan and lined it with just some parchment paper on the bottom. Then I've rolled it out. You wanna just roughly get it to the size of the pan as well. So you might need to just kind of push it into place with your fingers and then it's gonna bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes. And doesn't it look beautiful when it comes out? It's really nice and golden. We're gonna leave this cool in the pan for a while and then eventually we will turn it out onto a cooling rack to make sure it's completely cool before we assemble our tart. Creme mousseline is creme pâte with additional butter. 
So we're going to go back and finish off our creme mousseline and as Jürgen said, the main difference between creme pat and creme mousseline is that we're going to add extra butter to it. So you want to first start off by dumping your chilled mixture from the fridge into the bowl. I suggest using a stand mixer for this because it does need to whisk for a while. Then you're going to take your butter and add it a little bit at a time until it is fully combined and you want to just whip it until it forms a really nice consistency like so kind of looks a little bit like whipping cream here doesn't it then I'm going to clean off my whisk attachment and the next thing we're going to do is bag it up ready for piping later on because we do need to chill it again before we pipe it so I'm just using a regular tip 12 here in my tipless piping bag I'll pop the links in the description for those if you need to pick up any of those from Amazon and then just go ahead and fill your bag like so. Really handy if you use a spatula for this because you can get it out of the bowl really easily. Then I'm just going to tie up the end of the bag and pop it upside down in a mason jar in the fridge until I need it later. To assemble spread remaining confiture over the sablé base. Leaving a one centimetre pastry border. So here's the fun bit. It's time to assemble our tart. So We've already had our base cooling on a cooling rack and I cheated here. I already had some homemade jam. So I'm just going ahead and spreading that on the top of the base with my offset spatula. I find it's much easier to do this with an offset spatula. So you can really get to the edges because that base isn't fully flat, of course. Next, I'm just piping a spiral of the mousseline and you just want to start from the outside inwards now as long as your consistency is right and it's nicely chilled this will come together very easily there we go that looks perfect for stage one then it's time to add our fruit decorations and of course if you watch the show you'll see that they did a few different elements for this Arble Breton as well but I just wanted to keep this nice and simple so that I knew my kids would eat it as well. So I started off with some strawberries and I'm just working my way around to make a pretty design on there. Then I'm going to add some blueberries in the middle as well. You could do absolutely anything on this though. Any fruits that you like, you could do meringue kisses as they did in the show, you can add chocolate as well but I think it looks great just as it is here. Bakers, your time is up. That's it. Okay so there we go our Sable Breton is done. Let's take a closer look at it. And I've gone ahead and cut a slice of it. So the biscuity base is really nice and soft. Got a nice texture to it, a nice crumb as well. We've got our patisserie cream and then our fruit on top as well. So I did do it slightly differently to the version that the bakers made in the tent. But I can't wait to try this. I'm gonna grab myself a cup of tea and see what it tastes like. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're enjoying this series. Make sure you check out the rest of the technical challenges and signature bakes that I've done from this season of the Great British Bake Off. And next week is the final. I can't wait to see what they've got in store for us. I'm sure it's gonna be great being as it is the final of the season. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button below and also hit the bell. And also comment on this video. I love to hear what you think of these bake-alongs. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.